on this episode. It's turning into a horror movie now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's done. I'm out here today at Secret Garage SEO because I need to rob some parts from my Skyline. I'll be driving the new S15 soon and I remember that this had some nice tyres on the front when the turbo blew and you know, they're a little bit old but uh, they're better than what's on the front now so I'm just going to borrow these. There we go. So the S15 is good to go, we'll be driving it in the next video and where are we going to take it? Well here's a not so subtle hint. We're out here today at, you might recognize this building from hot version, Gunsai, that's the Gunma Cycle Center. What's this guy doing? Man, why is he driving such an old car? Should get something faster. I don't know why, but it feels like I've seen this uh, scene before somewhere. I just can't remember where. So this venue, originally designed for cycle sports, there's a bunch of roads that go around this mountainous area and it's meant to be fun for riding on bicycles, but these days it's been taken over by cars. We've shot videos here before and it's honestly the closest thing you can get to actual toge drifting and it still be legal. This event's being run by Ken Sato from Mercury and there's Sayaka, hello. Hello. Impact Blue. Impact Blue. <laughs> So she was on like mainstream TV recently as like doing these crazy drifting stuff. Anyway, so she got the tuna, come in there. Hi. Hi. Bunta da Bunta. Bunta. They're shooting some video stuff here, I don't know. Uh, but the reason I came out here today was not necessarily only for drifting. Oh yeah, these also belong to Ken, like the hyperdrive school which is his uh, drifting school. In the past few years, there've been a lot of FPV drone shots being used in drifting, like in competitions to get those good views and you know, promotion videos and things like that. And I've been kind of interested in doing something like that, but you know, I don't have to buy it myself and learn how to do it. Luckily for me, this guy from Australia called Lono FPV recently moved to Japan. We're jumping straight into doing the really tight, you know, toge style stuff. So yeah, let's see how it goes. <laughs> seen a Sil Uti for a while. It's a uh, Sylvia and the uh, the Ute in the back. 
That's what we call it in Australia anyway. This is some Mad Max stuff right here. Something else while we're here, new Lexus ISF, brand new, gonna go drift it. Stalking him, yeah. <laughs> like it's you know, like creeping behind him. <laughs> Whoa. Gotta say, I'm really keen to do more stuff with Lono. That was his first time at Gunsai, and next time we're gonna try some other stuff to make the footage even cooler. This next segment is also something I've wanted to do for a while. I often get messages from people asking about moving to Japan, and I thought, well, let's just say you wanted to live that dream Tokyo life in the middle of town, you know, have a car and a, a cool apartment. You know, how much is it gonna cost, and is it realistic? So because I know almost nothing about property in Japan, and I don't know where to find good stuff, I thought I'd ask, this guy here. Hello, Alex from Tokyo Portfolio. Alex has his own channel on YouTube. Like, you know those videos where people walk around apartments and they talk about them and stuff like that? Well, he does that except in Tokyo. Yeah, hey, definitely follow me on uh, Tokyo Portfolio. A lot of people keep asking about living in Tokyo. Like, they all want to live like Shibuya or like those sorts of places where they're right. like, you know, the famous places. Right, right, right. I want to give them some reality. Okay, so yeah, you said Shibuya. We're in the heart of Shibuya in probably the nicest area in Tokyo called Daikan Yama. And I'll show you a nice little apartment upstairs here just to show, you know, what like a normal apartment would be like uh, with a car. There's a parking lot over there too. This, this is the important thing. It needs, you need to be able to drive a car. Apparently there's a, oh. there's a parking here. Oh, yeah, there's actually a car trying to come in. There's now. actually a guy coming in right now. That's a crown. Maybe not a crown, something a bit nicer. Yeah. But it needs to, we need to be able to fit a sports car in here and Oh, it's gonna be so expensive. All right, can we go in? Yeah, that's okay. it. So a couple of caveats of this place. Uh, one, there's some furniture left in here. Okay. Uh, two, the uh, electric is off right now, so we're gonna have to deal with that. So, <laughs> okay. Yes. But well, we get to, to see the uh, the natural light. This is really big for like compared to other ones I've seen in Tokyo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's uh, 55 square meters, so what, 600 square feet ish for a one bedroom. That's pretty small anywhere else in the world, but for Japan, that's actually pretty big. We have a view outside. Yeah. There we go, view over Tokyo. And the train station is like two minutes that way. Yeah, two or three minutes, very close by. And if you're inside, you can't even hear the train or anything. It's uh, really nice. And then right down there, you'll see all these. Oh, the sunflowers. Those are all sunflowers, exactly. So that's the sunflower oh. run. But that's, all, that's also probably the only, what would you call it? A rabbit run? Not like a dog run, but like a rabbit run. Right. So people take their rabbits there. R and rabbits? Yeah, they're rabbits and they let them just run around free. <laughs> what? Yeah, not today obviously, but yeah, yeah. I is this a common thing in Tokyo? Like people having weird pets? Like I've, ne I've never heard of a rabbit run before. I guess you can't really have a dog. Well, you could have a dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Easily. Wait, what sort of dogs do people can people have in a place like this? Uh, so this place, you could get up to I think 15 kilos as the maximum weight. So like a Sheltie, maybe. Okay. Uh, yeah, or like a Corgi. And you can have a dog in here. Yeah, you can have a dog in here. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, or, if, or a rabbit. Or a rabbit, yeah. If you wanted to have a pet in here, they would charge you another month of security deposit. Just to let you know. On top of? On top of whatever the security deposit. For this one, it was one month, so it would be two months. This is your bedroom. There's no natural light in here, but it's still very spacious and nice. You have a walk-in closet over there. Uh, bathroom is over there as well. It's a little dark if you want to just take Yeah, I want to because honestly, one of the best things about living in Japan, uh, the bathroom, I mean, everyone always goes about it, the toilet. Oh yeah, we'll see the toilet too. The bathroom. I love the bathrooms here, yeah. So for those who don't know, these uh, bathrooms that they have are what I mean, they're wet rooms, right? Yeah. So if we go in, so keep that light going. If I go inside yeah. here, so I'm in here. If I close this, <laughs> it's, it's turning into a horror movie now. Yeah. Yeah. This is a completely wet room, so I can spray water everywhere, and and we're 100 percent okay. Yep. I love these. I have one of these in my house. These are the automatic hot water, so you can just press one button 
and these baths will fill up with water and yep. you can just sit in it. A lot of foreigners don't like taking baths, but honestly, in winter, yep. you gotta, you got to do it. My favorite part about this place, so look up here. Uh -huh. Yeah. So that thing is like the in-bath dryer. So in Japan, they don't usually use oh, yeah. dryers. You can hang clothes here and run like a dryer. So this becomes like a drying room. Yeah. Although the best thing about this particular unit is mm -hmm. that it also has a steam bath function or a steam shower function. So the entire uh, thing becomes like a, a sauna. Yeah. Exactly. <gasps> let me let me show you. No, baths overseas, you don't get like high. You know, I can I can come all the way down here and have it up to my neck. Yeah, and you're a big guy too. I'm pretty big. I mean, this, this would be if it was full of water, it'd be a lot more comfortable. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> so this is full of steam, and it's hot. Yes, and, and automatically steamy. filled up to the exact temperature and you know height and everything that you want. And not only that, it, yeah. it circulates hot water so it stays hot. Exactly. So I can stay in here for as long as I want. Exactly. <sighs> yeah. Here's actually the button, the mist sauna button. You can see. Oh, mist sauna. Yeah, that means steam bath. And then that's the heater. Heating, yeah. Yeah, then you have some more options in there <laughs> too. <laughs> it wasn't enough. It's all cut off from the outside, but these things have really good ventilation, so you don't have to worry too much about mold and things like that. Yeah, yeah. The toilet! There's the toilet. Yeah. Right, everyone, everyone's favorite. And all the buttons. Here we go. And here's the famous Oshiri button. Yes, the butt wash. Which means uh, ass. <laughs> Uh, gentle, bidet, right? uh, pressure, so you can turn the water pressure up and down. So that's water pressure and that is like area, like front or back. Oh. Yeah, if, if you have a, a bubble that's a bit too far back or something. Oh. <laughs> okay. This is the power, power. deodorizer. Power deodorizer. Power deodorizer. Because these things have like fans and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this actually sucks in the air after you stand up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, is that what that noise? I've heard that noise that's before. It is, and that's why, you know... It, it sucks stay. air in. Yeah, or as much at least. Wow. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I mean, if, you, if you're in a small place, you don't want it all stinking up. This is how you can tell that you're in a really nice uh, apartment in Japan. Is yeah. First off, you have a garbage disposal. Okay. So these are pretty much unheard of over here. In, yeah. In, except for like the newest of the new buildings. Same thing with the windows. It has dual pane glass. Most places are single pane in Japan. Right. Uh, and then you have a brand new dishwasher here. Okay, this is a thing that almost nobody has. And this might sound weird to people overseas who have like giant uh, dishwashers. Yeah, this is uh, standard size over here. This is, a, yeah, this is the same size as what I have, but yeah. you need one of these 100%. Absolutely. But for like a single bedroom place, you almost never see them, you know, free burner. And of course, you have this little guy, the little fish grill. The fish grill! Yeah, yeah. Again, brand new, so it still has a little piece of paper in it. Oh, this is one thing about these kitchens that you might notice, everyone. There's no oven. There is no oven built in at least, so that's why he actually bought a separate one. Yeah. Uh, even a separate toaster oven on top of that. <laughs> this is, okay, so this is a, a thing about Japan. You see this sort of thing quite a lot where you have uh, these things. Now this is like a, these are water ovens, aren't they? No, not this one. Yeah, yeah, but this one that's does a water as well. oven. Yeah, so this is a water oven. What you do is there you is. this guy out and then you fill that with water and it yeah. becomes like a steam oven, right? Yeah. And it's also a microwave and it's also just a regular oven. That's well. right, yeah, like a fan forced oven. So exactly. these, th these things do everything. Yeah. Yeah, these are good. But at the same time, you often see on top of these, the little <laughs> toaster oven yes. for doing your toast and stuff like that. So you might be thinking, well, wasn't there a grill just there? This fish grill, this thing here. Yeah. Yes, but it's designed to grill fish. Yeah. And you end up burning your toast all the time. Like, yeah, like, you don't want to do toast in there. Yeah. Because it smell like fish. If you ever there's, there's that fish. too. Yeah. What's this control here? Oh, that's the water heater. So in Japan, you turn on and off the water heater whenever you want to use hot mm. water, mm. and you can actually set the temperature that you want the water to be at. So this is separate from the bathroom. One. No, it's actually connected to the bathroom as well. You can actually press this button that says auto, mm. and then that will fill up the bath from here. Oh, it does have one of those buttons. Yes. Yes. That's that's what I was looking for. Yeah. So yeah, you can. Uh, you, you come home, you come over here to make yourself some dinner, and then at the meantime, you press the button, get the bath ready, just automatically. Yeah, it's already done. And then uh, if there's somebody in the bath and you want them to come in for dinner or whatever, and you don't want to walk the 10 steps over there. Oh, it has the call button? You got the call button right there. That's the intercom button. And that's like your little mic slash speaker thing. It's actually nice, there's a bit of green right in front of the house too, which yeah. is slightly unusual for Tokyo. So this is Daikonyama. This is Daikonyama, yeah. And it's maybe, I don't know, one stop away from Shibuya. Yeah. Yeah, so you can actually walk to Shibuya from here. It's maybe 10, 15 minutes or so. Okay. And uh, the station's right down there. You can kind of hear the oh, train. I can hear the train. Yeah. Just barely. Just barely. But if you're inside, you can't hear it at all. If you have the windows closed, forget it. 
but uh, it's a very desirable neighborhood. It's a very high-end neighborhood, and basically, yeah, you have that guy right in front of us. That's from 2000. That's like the last big building that was built around here. So you have this really, really expensive neighborhood, nothing new, mm. and that's why everything is so expensive. There's, uh, some great little bars down there, and if you know, Ebisu is another really popular. Oh, yeah. That's just that's over the hill. Right there, too. Yeah. Oh, that's the that's ABC station right there. Yeah, yeah, it's basically ABC, uh, and it's maybe a seven-minute walk from here. So you know, very there's easy so to much eat. stuff to eat in ABC. Oh yeah, yeah, great yeah. Little gyoza places, bars, restaurants. Yeah, I mean, this is where like all the Japanese celebrities want to live. You know, it's one of the okay. Places. It's the Beverly Hills in Japan, I would say. Oh, really? okay. I think we need to talk uh, money. Okay. About what this place costs. So let's have a quick talk about what's this place going to cost a month. All right, so 360,000 yen. Yep. So what is that, three grand US? I'm, I'm gonna add it up. That's the monthly cost. Right. If you just get this, that's plus whatever parking lot you get. Okay. Right? Uh, so just to move in, you have one month of security deposit that, yep. is, that comes back to you. Yep. Key money is yep. one month as well. That does not come back to you. You have to pay the first two months of rent in advance. Right. And then you also have to pay one month for commission. Put that in with a little bit of like other fees, like insurance and all that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. And yeah, it's whatever is on this screen right now. So you need, let's say, six months worth of rent ahead of time in a big ball yep. to slap down to move in. And that's not just here. That's like almost anywhere, basically. That's more or less the that's same. The way it works. Yeah. Oh, there's a really cool little... Suzuki down there. Look, he's got little white walls on the uh, on the every. And by the way, every time I see a pro box these days, I think it's you driving. <laughs> <laughs> if I wanted to have my friends come over and visit, I mean, they could come by train, obviously, but there's a coin parking down there, and it costs maximum maximum per day 25, like 2,500 yen. And there's another one just down there too. So there's these tiny little car parks that you can park in. Yeah, yeah that one's 28. 28. Hundred. Yeah, the building doesn't have any guest parking, so you'd have to chuck them in there. Where's the closest uh, expressway entrance to here? Uh, Shibuya. Shibuya? Yeah. Okay, so that's so cool. I could go to a racetrack and then come back here, like get off at Shibuya Park and then go out for a, a nice dinner. Yeah. I want to do that, I want to live here. This is, <laughs> this is nice. So, this one's taken? Yeah, just, I just got taken last Just week. got taken. Sorry, so this building does actually have a big parking lot. Yeah, see this is what I'm most interested in is yeah. the parking situation. You just pull in your car right here, this opens up, and then you'll have this carousel in there. It's kind of like in Tokyo Drift, you know? Oh, you mean it's the one where it goes around and around. You cut. That's the one. That's so you, you press the button and your car comes out. Yes, your car will come out, you drive it out here, and when you drive it in, it's going to be facing the wrong way, so you have to turn it. Oh, All right. That's it. One of those kind of things. That's about 45,000 yen a month. 45,000 on top of the rent. Yeah, not including the rent. Yeah. Uh, okay. But, you know, but, I actually have a friend that lives around the corner from here that has like a normal looking parking lot. Uh -huh. Maybe American or Australian standards. You want to go see what it looks like? I do. One other thing I need to check is what's the ground clearance like for. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. You could get a low car in yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Right, we're about 10 minutes from where we just were. Uh, we walked down here, had a nice little cup of coffee by the Meguro River. And having a car space in the middle of Tokyo is a big deal. Like having a car space, you know, underground parking is the most expensive. Having like what we just saw, that rotisserie one is also expensive, but honestly, sometimes you just need to park wherever you can. And um, if you have something cool like this Impala, then you kind of don't have a choice because it's so big. Yeah. But this isn't the biggest car that's parked in here. Look at this down the back here. Yeah, so this is my friend's parking lot. Uh, these are both of his cars. This is a 1962 Impala mint condition. Beautiful. It's really nice. Color. I love that color. Uh, original upholstery and everything. But then check this out. This is my favorite. This is his 1958 Rolls Royce uh, Silver Ghost. But if you look at the front, it looks like a normal Silver Ghost. Come to the back. It's a wagon. It's a wagon. Well, it's actually a van. So this oh, is, it is technically it's a van. Yeah. yeah. This is actually stuff that he's going to be delivering because he has a furniture store right around the corner, like a vintage furniture store. And this like, is his like yeah. Garrett interior. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing in Japan makes sense. <laughs> Like you think you've got it figured out sometimes, but then you see this. You yeah. see this sort of thing. Oh, and the uh, the rear view mirror that when you have a frontal accident, it goes through your skull. Yep, that's the one. Yeah. Oh, but uh, they were very very considerate. They even put a little handle over there. Oh, a handle there. Yeah, for to puncture your neck. Exactly. 
furniture sellers in Tokyo living dangerously. Yeah, they, they care more about the furniture than their own safety. It's yeah. right up the back. Yeah, this thing is, it's not very wide, but it's extremely long. It's like mm. a limousine almost, yeah. right? So it's impossible to find a parking space. I actually found this parking spot for him. And you can see it's perfect because it's really long and, and narrow, but at the same time, it's wide enough to fit this guy. But it's not that long. This guy is very narrow, but it's very long. So it was the only parking spot that we could find that would fit both of them. And how much does this cost a month? Can you say that? Uh, yeah, yeah. This one uh, comes out to about 90000 a month. 90,000 yen yeah, a month. What's that, $800 right now? Yeah, yeah. for for, that, for an open two-car space. <laughs> but yeah, this is what it's like uh, if you wanted to have bigger cars, let's mm. say, mm. Uh, and actually be able to park them somewhere in Tokyo. Yeah. Oh, and one, one, cool thing about, one cool thing about this spot here is, I can probably show you the number plate on this. Yeah, yeah that's fine. On this over here. Yeah. It is a Shinagawa plate. Yeah. So the, the coolest number plate you can have is Shinagawa. So that's like the, the area that the car is parked in and like the area that it's registered to. And if you have that plate, it means you live in a rich part of Tokyo. Yep. So all the Lamborghinis and stuff that you see always have this symbol here, Shinagawa, on the plate. So that's this, this area that um, cars are registered to. So there you go. This is the reality. How much is this, this spot again? Uh, 90,000 a month. 90,000, so like 800. That's it, yeah. $800. Yep. $800. <laughs> yeah, it would be pretty cool to live in a place like that, but I think for a car person, honestly, having a big, open, quiet place like this makes more sense. Although, if you are after a high-end place in Tokyo, definitely hit up Tokyo Portfolio, check out his videos. He's not just a YouTuber, that's his actual job, too. So, thanks, Alex, for showing us around. Also, a big thank you to all these people here, my Tier 3 patrons over on Patreon.com. Uh, and all the other patrons too, thank you so much uh, for putting up with the uh, drought of content. Don't worry, we have stuff stacking up here. You're going to have an absolute deluge of stuff coming up. See, here's, uh, here's some cool wheels I bought for the, uh, the Pro Suck. As you can see, these are steel wheels and these are not steel wheels. These are actually lightweight uh, aluminium wheels with uh, semi-slick tires on them. So this is going to be ridiculous. Also, this is uh, suspension. Uh, lateral rod, air filter and stuff like that. We're collecting parts for it. So there's stuff happening. Also JZX has been tuned and ready to go over 600 horsepower. That should be fun. Uh, one JZ meeting coming up soon as well. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Yeah, the viewers are going to love seeing you kissing the lips. And no, I put that in the outtakes usually. All right.